Hi everyone, I'm uh, Grant Slater. I'm one of the sysadmin team behind OpenStreetMap. Can everyone hear me okay? Is it on? <laughs> no. So I, I'm Grant Slater. I'm part of the OpenStreetMap sysadmin team. Uh, I'm a South African living in London, so apologies for my strange accent. Uh, I'm the hardware monkey behind the project. I look after all the physical hardware that the project actually runs on. I'm also part of a group called the Operations Working Group, who look after uh, planning of the project, scaling, make sure, make, making sure we can keep pace with the project. Uh, OpenStreetMap isn't my, my day job. I'm a web developer sysadmin during my the day. I've got a very like relaxed boss who doesn't mind me spending too much time on OSM. Uh, OpenStreetMap running the project is a technical challenge. We don't have very many resources to run things on. We have 1.2 million users, as you probably are aware. We have 3,000 mappers each day, which isn't, isn't all that, that many, but some of those guys are very active. I don't know how they do it. 18 hours a day, they're in there. Uh, the site, osm.org, we have 3.5 million unique visitors each month. Our, our database is three terabytes. A lot of that is, is indexes. Uh, the database server really gets hit. We have reads, writes, so it becomes quite complicated to get these things running. The main map server, which is called tile.openstreetmap.org, which is what you see when you first get to the website, it's updated minutely. We're serving 2,700 tiles per second, which is little map tiles. Uh, that peaks during the day at 5,400. Uh, we serve an average of 175 megabits per second, peaking at 340 megabits per second. So it's, it's quite, a, quite a challenge to run this as a volunteer project. So we have quite a small team, as I mentioned. Uh, we have uh, Tom Hughes hiding somewhere just over here. He's one of the main sysadmins behind the project. He does most of the code. There's myself. There's another person called Matt Amos who we had to leave in London to hold fort. If something goes wrong, he'll hopefully fix it. Uh, we have two sysadmins that are dedicated to particular tasks. We have a guy called John Burgess who mainly looks after the tile server. We have... Uh, there's a lady called Sarah Hoffman, based in Switzerland, who looks after Nominatum, which is the main OSM search service. So if you, on the left-hand side of OpenStreetMap, type a search query, it hits this, this application, and it uh, gets pretty good results. We also have, as I mentioned a little earlier, an operations working group. Now, this is the group that goes, what do we need in six months? What do we need in a year to keep running the project? And uh, Andy Allen is hiding somewhere in the audience. He's the guy to talk to if you want to hear about all the planning involved. He's, he, he really is a good speaker. We also have a French lady called Emily Lafray, And of course, the operation working group involves all the sysadmins. We, uh, we break down the services that OSM runs into three different categories. So we have the primary services which we consider absolutely essential. If we didn't have these, the project wouldn't exist. So obviously, the website is the primary service. We have an API, which is how people edit, edit OpenStreetMap and put in all the information. So the presentation earlier today was about uh, the editor ID. ID interacts with the API and sends back queries and queries things backwards and forwards. And then, People want to get data out, so uh, that suddenly started working, hasn't it? <laughs> uh, there's planets.osm.org. This is where everyone gets their data from. Uh, if you were at Frederick's talk just, just before mine, he, he, feeds, he loads in all the data from planet.osm.org and splits it out into all the regions. But the main, the main website where all the data comes from is planet.osm.org. We have some services which we consider secondary, so we like to keep them up, but they're not absolutely essential if there was a major disaster. So the tile.osm.org service is the one where you see all the maps. It looks pretty. There are many other people that do rendering of tiles. So if 
Tiled OSM.org went down, you could go to MapQuest, or there's many other people that make uh, renderings of OSM data. So that's why we don't consider it an absolute essential. The nominatum, nominatum service, uh, which I mentioned earlier, is the search and then wiki. All the project's documentation is kept on the wiki. Then we have the big list. <laughs> so there's a number of other services that us as the sysadmin team run. There's help.osm.org if you ever get stuck and you need some help. Uh, help.osm, there's lots of guys that are contributing in there, always, always happy to answer your questions. There's an OpenStreetMap blog, there's a foundation wiki, there's OTRS, which is a ticket handling service. So if you have a, a formal question that has to be answered, it goes into this. And then there's guys behind there that look after some of the questions there. It's mainly used by the data working group. Uh, because we're an open source project, we, we want to run analytics and seeing what people are doing on the website, but we don't want to give all that data to Google. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we run a service called, one of the services that we run is PWiki, which is uh, analytics. It looks very similar to Google Analytics, we can tell how long a person's been at the website, you know, have they opened one of the editors. It just helps us feed back and, you know, what are we doing right, what are we doing wrong. Uh, we have the lists, which are mailing lists. Uh, we have SVN and, and Git, which are the, the repositories where all the code is stored for the project. We have Track, which is uh, an add-on to SVN and Git where people can post bugs. Uh, I'd recommend you post bugs to GitHub if you, you do have code things. We have a service called rc.osm.org, which is just a, a web interface to the chat. There's about 400 odd people that are always in chat across different channels. Uh, there's regional channels like OSM Germany. Uh, there's the OSM channel, OSM Dev. It's if you want an answer quickly and uh, you just pop in there. Uh, there's the dev service where some, some guys develop code and there's different services on there. There's the switch to OSM uh, blog website. And then we have some small imagery services. Uh, Thankfully, some other people do run some services like tag, taginfo.osm.org, which if you're in the ID session earlier today, it shows what tags, so the basic fundamental of OpenStreetMap is you tag data with information. That is, the uh, tag info is a service which works out what are the most popular tags, how they're documented. It pulls in data from a number of different sources to do this. Uh, there's an OpenStreetMap forum, and uh, we have a continuous integration service run by someone else as well. So, to do all that, we need some servers. <laughs> OpenStreetMap, the main core of the project, we run on 36 different services. Servers. Uh, I've just highlighted the, the servers which are primary to the project. Uh, we host most of the servers in two university data centers in uh, the UK. They very generously host us. Uh, the project would be a lot more expensive to run if it wasn't for the generous two universities. Uh, part of the project we're trying to standardize on hardware, it just makes it easier to maintain. We, we're currently uh, standardizing on HP ProLint servers and Supermicro Super servers. That's technical jargon. Uh, the picture on the right is just one of our racks. We have about eight, eight racks in total that we use. Okay, so the main OSM service, the, when you go to osm.org, we have three servers which you actually potentially go to. Uh, they access a web server and we've got a file server serving some things in the background. And the code that runs that is Ruby on Rails, which uh, there's a Git repository for, if you want to contribute, please do. Uh, the bug track on there is pretty active. There's always one or two things. Then, uh, so yeah, the three web servers that you access. The API is another layer. So some API requests, which are very quick, quick firing ones, will actually be served by the web layer. So the first top three machines which you access. Then you may be doing more complicated queries to the website, maybe downloading all the map data in a particular area. We run those on secondary servers, and they do more bulk, bulk sort of queries. And uh, the map query, the one to download the entire map, is the most complicated query we run. We don't actually use Ruby on Rails to do that, which 99% of the website is done, done in. 
use a C++ code to do that called CGI map. Um, there's a Git repository there. A anyone's welcome to contribute, benchmark it. It's great fun. <laughs> so those are the, the different layers. Yeah, and then we have a primary database server. The project we run on Postgres 9.1 a question that gets asked quite often is, do we use PostGIS? No, we don't, actually, because our data format's not really uh, a PostGIS data format. Uh, then that primary write server has two streaming slaves. We're still currently working on those to get them all running perfectly for the project. As I said earlier, three, three terabytes of data and a lovely picture of one of the database servers that I took when I was working on one of the <laughs> working there. Uh, then another primary service is, I mentioned, the, the data ex export, so planet.osm.org. Uh, a number of things feed out of, of that website. There's a streaming service which isn't used by many, so it's not very reliable, but you can get instant updates of OSM data fed off the streaming service. Then there's a minutely export, which is what most, most people who want up-to-date information from OSM get. So every minute there's a new file that appears on planet.osm, what has changed in the last minute. All the tile services, any, anything that does live data uh, feeds off that. We also do a daily and then a weekly data dump of OSM. It's around about 370 gigs or 28 gigabytes compressed. So it's quite a hefty bit of data. That's probably why you want to go to Geofabric, which cut up the data into different regions all over the world. So our tile rendering setup, we have uh, two servers, one of which is currently live, the other one we, we're working on at the moment. It's, uh, that does use a PostGIS database. So the OSM format is, is read in using a, a tool called OSM to PGSQL. Uh, then we have a rendering stack called Mod Tile. Uh, there's a, it recently appeared on GitHub, so if anyone wants to contribute that, to that, please do. Uh, then the OSM style sheet, so how the map looks. Uh, traditionally, we've used the horrible XML file for uh, displaying data or how to display data. Andy Allen has kindly redeveloped uh, the OSM style sheet into a, a thing called Carto CSS, which if you're familiar with CSS, is, works in similar ways. It's much easier to style your map and to add new features. Carto is much easier to maintain. So if you want to hear more about the OSM style sheet, uh, Andy's talk is at 12.15 later today. And the new style sheet will go live on OSM probably in the next month's time. But if you want a quick preview, there's uh, orm.osm.org where you can have the quick preview. Uh, OpenStreetMap, we have our own CDN that we, we, we use. So CDN is you put servers closer to people so they can see the map quicker, a content distribution network. So we have about 10 servers all over the world, donated by different people, hosted by different people. And then, for example, if, you, if you're in the US and you want to look at the map, you're actually accessing a server in Canada. Uh, if you're in Australia, you, get, you, you access a server in Australia. And that's just a way to make the map appear quicker for people. Uh, sorry, just jumping back. That is you. That updates in real time. So we, if one of our servers goes down, if a data center goes down, that that map, uh, which you can access on dns.openstreetmap.org forward slash tile, osm org, that updates in real time. So if something goes down, it will redirect you, and uh, everything will balance. So the whole service keeps working. Uh, we have the code that manages that in GitHub as well at the URL just below. So the nominatum service, now this is a secondary uh, service that we run. It takes all the OSM data and does magic with it. It's, I don't know how it does it, but it works out logic from OSM's crazy data in places. And it builds a, an address hierarchy from all the data so that when you want to search for a particular place, it can find it and work out the hierarchy for building the address. Uh, there's the best place to jump off from that if you want to find out more is the wiki. I've listed the link there. So we have that very small sysadmin team. 
It's quite a lot of things that we run. Many of the services are replicated over multiple servers. We use a thing called Chef. Now, Chef is uh, infrastructure as code. Now, I, I'm sure some of you are familiar with it, but we don't actually maintain individual servers. We write code that maintains all the servers. So if we want to set up a tile server, we will write code to set up a tile server. You know, all the configuration files, the packages that need to be installed. We add that to Chef and we say, the server is now a tile server. And we fire up Chef on there, or Chef automatically runs on there. It'll up update it within seconds uh, or minutes sometimes. Uh, so we run all those services that I've listed before to varying degrees out of, out of Chef. And uh, we can change the roles of servers, move things around as, as needs be. Yes. <laughs> so Chef is absolutely amazing. But when you've got a few sysadmins working on a thing, you know, I might do something and someone else might do something. And sometimes it's quite hard to track what is happening with different sysadmins doing different tasks. Uh, We've got Git plug, plugged into Chef so that we can see all the changes happening. We can, we can check what other guys have done. And uh, it, it's just magic. Once it all happens, you deploy things. Within minutes, a server's updated, a new package is installed. We've got a new tile server. It just, it just happens automatically. Uh, Tom has created most of the, the Chef stuff, the real magic there. Uh, if you want to see the code that we actually use. There's now a public repository for all the chef cookbooks, they're called, ironically. And uh, you're welcome to access on git.osm.org. We do keep a few things secret. We don't want you knowing all our database passwords. And so we keep that in a separate repository. Uh, all the updates to, to chef are reported on IRC in the OSM dev channel. So you know, we get community involvement. All the developers know what's going, what's changing, those sorts of things. We also keep DNS in, in, in a Git repository so that we can manage that and see what the other sysadmins are doing and, and change things around and keep, keep a good log of what is happening. Uh, we have two forms of monitoring behind that. We have a proactive system where we can keep a log and see how things are changing. We use a simple service called Munin which is a lovely graphing service. It's very basic, but it does exactly what we need. Uh, when certain triggers happen, it sends out alerts to the admins, you know, this machine's running out of disk space, et cetera, or this machine's on fire and it's burning. <laughs> we, we know about it. Uh, we also use Munin to see the, the long-term trends in, in OpenStreetMap. You know, in six months' time, are we going to have to you know, upgrade disks, add more CPU, et cetera? Then we have a reactive service. We use a commercial service called Pingdom. So it's constantly polling the service to find out, are they up, are they running, are things running at the right speed? And those send, unfortunately, me a text message. So at 3 AM, I sometimes get woken up and uh, have to quickly log in and fix things. Fortunately, that isn't as often as it used to be, since we have quite a number of servers to run things now. Future plans. Uh, I've kept this quite short because we, we sort of reactively plan things. You know, if we have a sudden growth spurt, we'll throw in some extra servers or get more resources. But our future plans are we, the API service, uh, we're having more web-based editors, uh, things that are on the web that want to access the API. So we plan to have a JSON API function, so you can access the whole API via JSON. Uh, <laughs> The next thing, routing. It's one of the most frequently asked things that we, we get asked. When are we going to add routing to OSM? We do plan to do it. It's a priority. We plan to add it later this year. There's some hardware problems that we need to solve. And we also need to figure out who are we going to offer the, the routing to. Because if we have tens of thousands of people accessing op OpenStreetMap's routing service, it's unlikely that we would be able to cope. Uh, if you want to run routing, all the services would be available in the code so that you could run your own routing. Uh, as I mentioned, we, we're going to be adding more servers just so that we can keep with the growth. Uh, the tile CDN, which I mentioned earlier, uh, we're particularly looking uh, for people that are willing to host servers or have servers available anywhere in the Americas, South America, North America, 
just so that we can offload some of the, the weight of OpenStreetMap onto those servers. Or otherwise, in Asia, we're looking for servers particularly there. OpenStreetMap's current growth rate is 3% month on month. So compounded, that works out to about 40% year on year. So we nearly double, well, we add 40% each year, but you go up one percentage and that's already 56 odd percent and it starts getting quite, quite a thing to add so many servers as a volunteer project as we go. So, <laughs> we need money. Uh, it's expensive to run all these things uh, and we really do appreciate help. When I did the slide, we were at 74% of the donation drive for getting all the hardware for this year. Uh, I think we're now up to 76% thanks to a few generous donations, but please do help if, if you're an organization, big or small, or private person, you've got a, some cash, please, please donate. Thank you. Uh, any questions? So the question was, will our database scale? Because we have one database server and th three terabytes of data. Uh, yes and will, will that model scale? So yes and no. Uh, at the moment, our scaling plan is fairly simple. So 90% uh, of the requests to the database server are read requests. We plan to scale out the read requests uh, significantly more and more. So we've got two slave servers at the moment. We plan to add more, more slave servers as we go along. Uh, the challenge of doing multi-master replication is quite a complicated one. We will solve it as, as and when we need to, but fortunately, we're at least a year away from that. And the Postgres guys are working on multi-master, and we, we hope they'll get there soon. Yeah. Any more questions? So the question was, uh, there's a service called Zappi, uh, which is an extended OSEM API query uh, system. Uh, it's, it hasn't been well supported. A few different people have run it. Uh, is it going to be pulled back into OSEM? Uh, it's a difficult one. Whatever hardware it's been run on in the past, it doesn't work. It, we always need more hardware than it runs on. Uh, but there are other guys doing zappy type clones that are, are quite interesting. Frederick uh, mentioned one or two in the, the last few t uh, slides of his talk. Uh, will it come into the primary thing? I don't know. But if you go to the wiki planet.osm.org's page, there's a few services there that are probably better in the long run than relying on zappy. Yeah. It's a question down here. to blame. <laughs> so, so Ian D's over there who I'm meeting for the first time in person, he ran the Zappi service, uh, but there are other services that are now running Zappi. Uh, he wasn't getting very many queries. Uh, we may add the Zappi service up, ag up again. Uh, any more questions? Yeah. The, the question is, do the team, the sysadmin team, do we think we need to be paid or should, should we be paid? Should it be a full-time job? Uh, it feels like a full-time job sometimes. Uh, it, that's not really a question for me to answer. I would love to be able to spend all, all day on OSEM. Uh, whether or not we have the support structures to support uh, full-time employees yet, I, I don't know about that. Uh, we've got a question down there. Sorry, can you ask? Yeah. 
So, so PWiki is actually a third party. Uh, the question was, how did we develop PWiki? Thankfully, we didn't need to. It's a third party service. There's a few other like-minded guys that don't want uh, Google finding out all the analytics for your website. Uh, I think it's on SourceForge and it's fairly well supported, uh, the PWiki. Uh, any more? Uh, the question was, how do we interface with the community to find out what they're looking for? Uh, we're in a sort of microculture of OSM where most of this admin team is based in London. Uh, Ian Dees is based in the US. He's, he's quite close involved with the sys admin team. Uh, we do hear many, many things and we get asked many different things of what, what the community is looking for, but we really do try limit the number of services that we, we run because we have to support them in the long term. And there is a broad spectrum of guys that are willing to run things, uh, that are eager to do things, and it's, and it's good for us to push those things out for other people to run. Uh, so we really, as the sysadmin team, we, quite, we limit what we run. Our primary focus is getting things for mappers to make the service better for mappers. Uh, Users of the data, they're welcome to use other, other people for doing that. Uh, I don't know if that fully answered your question, but I hope it did. Uh, I've got one more minute. Anyone with another question? Yeah. So the Rails server, we use uh, Passenger under Apache. Uh, we've had to run a threaded model on Apache, so NPM event. Uh, w the the three servers we use uh, are just round robin DNS for those three servers. So it's fairly fairly simple setup. We like to keep things fairly simple in the setup. The three backend servers that handle the heavier API queries, the queries are passed by mod, mod proxy, and then we run uh, uh, a few things to integrate through to CGI map, uh, fast CGI to, to access those. Uh, one more question, one last one? <laughs> no, I think we're good. Thanks, thanks guys.